antenna topics, things you've brought up over the last couple of months, which I want to mention, but also some exciting news. At least I think it's exciting, and some of you will as well. We're disposing of our museum at our Portsmouth warehouse, and it's my personal museum, and I'm disposing of that mainly on auction on eBay. And below this video, I put a link to the eBay auction site. So take a look. Some interesting goodies there, particularly if you're my age. Yes, it's time to close the museum down. I've had the museum for quite a few years now. Some of the items were disposed of when we moved down to Portsmouth, but the bulk of the items we're now disposing of. What's there? Well, we've got uh, an HRO. We've got an R1155. We've got a KW Vanguard AM transmitter. And uh, we've got an Eddystone EA12, the, uh, the amateur radio band version. Also got a little Mizuho handheld transceiver that I personally have had for quite a few years. Amazing little transceiver, quite a collector's item now. There's other things there as well. So click on the link below, take a look, and if something takes your fancy, well, make a bid. There we are. It's interesting stuff. Sad in some ways, but you know, things can't go on forever, can they? And I haven't got room in my garage, and Portsmouth Warehouse is closing down, so I need a new home for these goodies. So antenna topic, where should we start? Well, let's start with the nine to one Anun. You know, I've had so many comments and questions about the nine to one Anun. It's one of these Marmite things, really. You either like them or you don't like them. Some people swear by them and some people swear at them. Basically, it's designed for N-fed antennas. And the assumption really is, I think, that if you have an antenna which has got a medium impedance on several bands, then the 9 to 1 Anun will match it, and they give you several bands coverage. That's the theory behind it. I've never been totally convinced, but a lot of people have had su success with it. And I think really it comes down to the length of the antenna. You need to adjust the antenna length in order to get the best out of the 9 to 1 Anun. So as I say, the Anun is looking for a medium impedance. So you want to avoid a quarter wavelength of wire on the lowest band because that will be a low impedance, it's too low. You also want to avoid a high impedance, which would be a half wavelength of wire on the lowest band. So basically you're looking for a 3 8 wavelength of wire on the lowest band. That's a sort of a medium impedance. And that's the sort of thing that a 9 to 1 Anun likes. So if you start off with a 3 8 wavelength, on the lowest band, that's a good starting point, and then you can fiddle about on the other bands and make some minor adjustments, see how you get on. If you want to do a quick check on ham radio conditions, here's a handy little website to click onto. I'll put a link below this video so you can check it out for yourself on a daily basis. Let's talk about stealth antennas. Antennas that you can't install because you haven't got a mast. Well, you know, you can. By the way, this is summertime. Would you believe it? It's actually just stopped raining. We've had the wettest summer for ages. Anyway, never mind. You can still get it out in the garden when it stops raining. Stealth antennas, antennas in gardens where you haven't got a mast, you can get away with it. What you do is you use an end-fed half-wave. The reason it's end-fed is because it's easier to feed with coax. You don't want a dipole halfway down the garden with all the shrubs in the way, because the shrubs can be the support for your antenna. Let's say you want to get on 20 metres, you've got a fairly short garden. Well, probably you can squeeze in 10 metres a while. That's a half wave on 20 metres. And say you've got it, I don't know, two, two and a half metres above the ground in the shrubs and so forth. Can't be seen. But that will give you signals, it will work. Don't run away with the idea you've got to have high mass to radiate on the HF bands. What you will find is you'll get more short distance signals, you'll get short skip. You'll get on 40 metres 100, 150, 200 miles. On the 20 metre band you'll work easily into Europe. I'm talking about G stations of course, stations based in the UK. So don't despair. 
you can get away with a horizontal wire only about two or two and a half meters above the ground run it through the shubs now you will find that because it's fairly low it will tend to be too long if you measure a half wave you'll find that when you when you measure the best bswr you'll probably find the resonance is is a bit lower than the 40 meter band or the 20 meter band just shorten it until you get a decent swr now if you can get 20 meters of wire down the garden, and it doesn't have to be in a straight line, it can go around the garden, get it around the garden, check the VSWR, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised because 40, 20 meters of wire will give you 40, 20, 15, and 10. If all else fails, okay, 10 meters of wire, halfway on 20 meters, run it down the garden, bend it round if you need to, that'll give you 20 meters and 10 meters. You'll have a lot of fun. So if you think you can't go on the HF bands because masts are banned, don't despair. Amateur radio is all about doing what you can, having fun with what you've got. Don't worry about what others are doing. You have fun with what you've got. That's my, that's my motto. Amateur radio, have fun and have fun with what you've got and treat it as a challenge. Coming soon, a review on this great dual band radio. Great for beginners, budget class. Here's a quick call out for Waters and Stanton. Home Radio Dealers established 50 years ago. We've got some great deals on our website, whether it be transceivers, antennas, accessories. Check our website regularly. There's some bargains there. It's worth foraging about and seeing what we've got. You may be pleasantly surprised. Now here's something interesting. Did you know that you can stretch an antenna? Why would you want to stretch an antenna? I mean, we're all used to, aren't we, adding inductance to an antenna to make it shorter usually to get it into a smaller space. But why would we want to stretch an antenna? What you can do with a, uh, an antenna is to actually make it longer, but yet it tunes to a lower frequency. Hmm. Let me explain a way that has been used very recently for N-fed half waves. Now we all know, I think, well a lot of you know, that an N-fed half wave basically works on its harmonics. And if we've got a long enough garden, we can actually put out an 80 metre half wave. An 80 metre half wave is 40 metres long. And that's great. It works on its harmonics. If we have an 80 metre antenna that's tuned to 3.5 megahertz, it's resonant on 7, it's resonant on 14 megahertz, 21 megahertz and 28 megahertz. That's great, isn't it? Well, it's not actually. In actual, in actual fact, to be fair, when you work an antenna on harmonics, it actually progressively rises slightly in frequency. So when you get to 28 megahertz and start, we start off at 3.5 megahertz. When you get to 28 megahertz, it's actually more likely to be about 28.3 or something like that. That's okay. But wait a minute. If you're like most and you want to operate sideband on 80 meters, you're not interested in having an antenna resonant 3.5 megahertz, are you? It's great if you're a CW operator. But if you're an SSB operator, you're likely to want the antenna to resonate about 3.7. Well, that's okay on 80 meters. But the second harmonic of 3.7 is 7.4 megahertz. It's out of the 40 meter band. It gets even worse on 20 meters. It's 14.8 megahertz. And on the 28 or 10 meter band, it's almost out of the band. It's about 29.6 megahertz. So quite clearly, starting off at 3.7 megahertz is a bit of a problem if you're fortunate enough to have a garden where you can get an 80 meter half wave in. But there's a neat way around it. If you add capacitance to the center of the antenna, and for 80 meters, it's roughly, and it's experimentation here, but roughly, if you add 700 puff, to the center of the antenna. In other words, the 80 meter antenna, uh, 40 meters long, you cut it in the middle and you insert a capacitor about 700 puff. Now you're not likely to get a capacitor that value, but what you can do is you can get some high voltage 100 picofarad capacitors, put them in parallel, seven in parallel, will give you 700 puff, fine. Now that makes the antenna, although it should be resonant at 3.5, it actually makes the antenna resonant 3.7. So you've got your long antenna, which would normally be resonant at 3.5, but you've actually made the 80 meter one resonant, resonant at a higher frequency. 
But as you go up higher in frequency, that capacitance has very little effect on the other bands. It becomes almost a short circuit. So what you end up with is an end-fed half wave on 80 meters that's resonant on 3.7, even though the length suggests it should be resonant on 3.5, it's resonant on 3.7, but then on 40 meters, it's resonant at about, about 7.1 or 7.15. And on 20 meters, it's almost a short circuit, this capacitance, so it resonates around about 14, 14.1. And the same up the bands until you get to the 10 meter band where if you're lucky, it'll resonate about 28.5. So that's the way of stretching an antenna, inserting a capacitance. The capacitance will have the greatest effect on the lowest frequency and the smallest effect on the highest frequency. In actual fact, it'll appear as a short circuit as you go higher. It's called stretching an antenna. Now I'm gonna go back 60 years, April 1960. The RSGB Bulletin, two and sixpence. I'm not quite sure whether they ever sold it. But anyway, it's got two and sixpence on the front cover. Perhaps somebody knows whether you could buy it then. I don't remember being able to buy it. I think you have to be a member. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. There's an article in there. Well, actually, there's a regular article in there. There was then uh, by Pat Hawker, G3VA, and his... Um, articles was called Technical Topics, very popular actually, I used to look forward to it. And he's uh, mentioning vertical antennas. And would you believe, even then, there were doubts about the low angle properties of vertical antennas in suburban gardens. Yes, he mentions that. Do they really have the low angle radiation that is claimed? Well, I think we've all accepted now that uh, the theoretical low angle radiation of a vertical is only available if you happen to be operating in an open field well away from structures. But in the urban garden, the low angle radiation, although the potential is there, a lot of it is lost. Anyway, there is an interesting bit there by W9KPD. They actually published it in 1959. By the way, did you know that we had four meters then? We had the four meter band in 1960 and conditions then were phenomenal. We were working North African stations on four meters in 1960 using AM and gear that was not nearly as good, certainly, certainly in terms of receiver sensitivity it is now, working North Africa regularly on the four meter band. Gosh, those were the days. That sunspot cycle was amazing. Anyway, W9KPD, I'll put up on the screen here a little circuit. Now you might, re you might recognize that circuit. It's actually a Pi network. And the Pi network is what's in Valve transmitters, or most of them anyway, most of the commercial ones. And that is why recently I said that uh, I preferred a Valve linear amplifier because it had, it had a Pi network in it. And a Pi network effectively is an antenna tuning unit. So if you've got a valve linear, you can load into some reasonably high, well, I say reasonably high, you can load into three and four to one VSWRs with ease, no problem at all. Something you can't do with a transistorized linear. Anyway, W9KPD came up with a simple all band, well, not all band, but a simple vertical that covered several bands. And he says, and I can understand what he's saying, that the vertical should never be longer than five eighths of a wavelength on the highest band, not the lowest band. It should never be longer than five eighths of a wavelength on the higher band. The reason is that the angle of radiation, when you go above five eighths, the angle of radiation starts to rise quite significantly. I know there's one or two arguments about that, but basically, take it from me, the angle of radiation rises quite significantly and a bulk of the power is radiated at a high angle, which is not what you want. So if the rule of thumb, which he suggested, you should use a 5 8 antenna on the highest band and then use a matching network at its base, in this case, a Pi network. And a Pi network can actually match very high impedances indeed, if you have the right values. 
And you see on the circuit diagram that I showed you just now, um, you've got some meters in circuit. I'm not quite sure he's got those meters in circuit. Anyway, there's no explanation on that. But he suggested an antenna tuner unit at the base, and it's quite a good idea. A remote antenna tuner at the base, the antenna is 5 eighths of wavelength on the highest frequency band, and that means to say that the antenna is all in old money about 20 foot high on um, 20 foot high, which means to say it's roughly a 5 eighth on 10 meters. And as the uh, frequency comes lower, so the impedance gets easier and easier to match. And even on 20, uh, even on the 40 meters, it will work quite well. After all, it's over half size, and a half size antenna, vertical antenna, will still work very well, very efficiently. So, a simple antenna, K9 KPD in November 1959, would you believe? Give it a try, give it a try. It might be uh, just what you want. Trouble is, of course, you're gonna have to have almost certainly a commercial uh, antenna tune at the base, but uh, they're available. And give it a try and see how you get on. So, several interesting antenna topics. I hope you found it interesting. Thank you for your support, by the way. Don't forget to press the subscribe button. And also, thank you for your support, supporting Waters and Stanton. And it's much appreciated. And also, of course, supporting this channel. And keep your comments coming. It's very interesting to read about them. It's quite surprising how, as you, as you get older, you tend to make assumptions. And sometimes I find that I've got to go back and think, wait a minute, I didn't explain that as clearly as I should because I assumed that everybody knew. But not everybody does know, particularly newcomers. So I do appreciate your comments. And uh, in the meantime, enjoy your ham radio. You take care. And as usual, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.